Hello and welcome to the learning square. In this video tutorial, I will talk about the wavelet transform using MATLAB. So why is the wavelet transform actually essential? Wavelets, which are little waves, are functions that are concentrated in time as well as in the frequency around a certain point. We have looked at the Fourier transform before, but it has the drawback of dealing with just the frequency components in the signal. The temporal details are not available. Now we are familiar with the Heisenberg's uncertainty principle, which tells us that we can e either have the frequency resolution, which is high, and poor temporal resolution, or I can have a better temporal resolution, but a poor frequency resolution. So we have a wavelet transform, which is most appropriate for the non-stationary signals as the basis functions vary both in the frequency range and in the spatial range. Now the wavelet transform is designed in such a way that we get a good frequency resolution for low frequency components which are basically the average intensity values of the image and high temporal resolution for high frequency components which are basically the edges of my image. So the basic steps are that we start off with a mother wavelet such as Ha, Dobishis, Morlet, etc. These are available in MATLAB as well. Now the signal is then translated and shifted into scaled versions of this mother wavelet. So what we do is that suppose I have an original image. I apply the low pass filter and the high pass filter on the rows. Since I'm applying the wavelet transform in both the dimensions, I first apply on the rows and then the columns. So what I do is I first apply the low pass filter which should preserve low frequencies and apply the high pass filters to preserve the high frequency components. Now whenever I apply a high pass filter I get the details and whenever I apply the low pass filter I get an approximation value like we have seen in the previous lectures before. We are very familiar with the high pass filters and the low pass filters. So my horizontal approximation is got and what I further do is then I again apply the low pass filter on the columns and the high pass filter on the columns of this horizontal approximation and I get an approximate image by applying two low pass filters across the row and the column. When I apply the high pass filter on the column, I get the vertical details of the horizontal approximation that I had. So this is the vertical details of the horizontal approximation. Now I, when I have the horizontal details, when I apply a low pass filter on this, I get the horizontal details of the image and when I apply the high pass filter on the columns on this horizontal detail, I get the diagonal details. So generally, by whenever my signal is broken up into sub-signals, I have four images which are produced. One would be the approximate image and then three would tell me sub-signals show me the horizontal, vertical and diagonal details. If these details are small, they can be set to zero without significant change in the image. Hence, filtering and compression can be achieved using the wavelet transforms. So I know that if my vertical details, horizontal details, diagonal details are negligible, then I can just put them to zero without changing the approximate image. Now again looking back at the same thing, I have an image here and I have rows. I have, I apply the low pass filter and the high pass filter. What happens is then the signal is decomposed into two parts, a detailed part and an approximation part like we talked before. The sub signal produced from low filter will have the highest frequency equal to half the origin. Hence, according to the Nyquist sampling theorem, this change in the frequency range means that only half of the original samples need to be kept in order to perfectly reconstruct the signal. So what we do is, after we apply the low pass filter and the high pass filter, I subsample my image by 2. So what I do is, I have this image, I subsample it by 2, I get the resultant. Once I have this, I again apply on the columns the high pass and the low pass filters and I again subsample them by 2. So what I get is, I have 4 images wherein one would give me the average of the image and the other 3 components would give me the horizontal, vertical and the diagonal details. Now to reconstruct this, I will just have to again apply the reverse of it. So I have LL and LH. So according to my Nyquist theorem, I should be able to reproduce this image by upsampling, I get it across the columns, then again upsample it to get it across the rows. And similarly, when I apply it across the columns here, I am able to get my approximate image, which should be equal to the original image. Now, Dobushi's mother wavelet generally gives me such a result. We will look at this wavelet in our tutorial further. So the MATLAB function that we use to execute this is DWT2, <coughs> which works on X, which is my input matrix, and W name is the name of the mother wavelet that we use. Now this result gives me four components. It gives me an approximate coefficient matrix A, which is my 
approximate image and the details on the horizontal, vertical and the diagonal matrices. So let's see and apply it using MATLAB. Now instead of writing the word by word code, I've already written the program for you. So what we do is we start with reading the image. We see the image. Now we've applied this DWT2 function on the R component, green component and the blue component of the image. So I have a colored image here. We know that if I want to access the red component, I just have to suffix x with colon, comma, colon, comma, 1. So this would give me the red component of the x. This would give me the green component and this would give me the blue component of my image. I have here used the Trobuchet mother wavelet DB2. I could have used HAR or any other which is available in MATLAB. So I get four outputs from this. This is my XAR which is the average of the red component. This is the horizontal details of the red component, vertical details of the red component and the di diagonal details of the red component. Similarly, I apply for the both green and blue component. So I get the average of the green component, horizontal details of the green component, vertical details and the diagonal details. Similarly for the blue component. So I just take DWT2, apply it this. So X is my matrix here and DB2 is my mother wavelet. Once I have this, then I store the values. So I know that average value of my image. I apply this subscripting and I apply the first component as the XAR. Give the second component to the XAG green value and the third component to the blue value. Similarly for the horizontal image, I apply this and give it to the red component, to the green component and the blue component. So I have these images now. I have the average image, the horizontal details, the vertical details and the diagonal details. Now if I look at the variable details, so let me just run it first. So once this is run, you can see here my XA value. My XA is of type double. So to be able to visualize this, I need to divide it by 255 and I can see I am the horizontal component, vertical and the diagonal components. So this is what I had. This is my original image. This is my first figure. I am show X. This is my average image, the figure 2. This is my third which is giving me the horizontal details. This is the vertical details and these are the diagonal details. To be able to visualize them better, I use these standardized functions and this is how my image looks like. Now once I have applied this, I can again apply the DWT to function on these partial images. So this is what we were doing here. We were first taking this and then again applying the wavelet transform on each and every component. So I apply the DWT on XA, again the red component of XA, uh, green component of XA and the blue component of XA. I again extract these values which are again the subsampled parts of XA. Once this subsampling is got, I can again similarly get XAA like we had here. So this is my further subsampling done. Again I can visualize these. So you can see this is my average image now. That's the horizontal component of the horizontal component, vertical of the horizontal and the diagonal component. I can again visualize it using this. So with this code we have been able to realize the wavelet transforms. I have another one in which I have used the HAR mother wavelet instead and I have used it on the PEPPERS PNG. The concept remains the same so let's see how the results look like. So you can see the results. This is the average component, horizontal, vertical, diagonal and this is how I can visualize my image. So this brings us to the end of this lecture. See you in the next one. Thank you.